Welcome to the video on inverse trigonometry. This is going to be the inverse of what we were doing yesterday. So yesterday you set up a trig ratio in order to find a side. Today we're going to work backwards. Today we are going to use inverse trig to find angle measures. So this time I'm going to give you the sides and you're going to find the angles. So let's look right away at example number one. It says find the missing angle measures. We know angle C, angle C is 90. We're going to have to find angles A and B. I want to start with angle A. So the first step anytime you do a problem like this is you need to identify which side do you have. Do you have the opposite, do you have the adjacent, or do you have the hypotenuse? So across from C is going to be the hypotenuse. So I have the hypotenuse, and then I have the side across from A, which is going to be the opposite side. Now, we should know that O and H go with sine. If you don't remember that, put it at the top of your page, Sokotoa. Okay, so O and H is going to go with sine. So I have sine of angle A equals 36 over 85. Okay, I want to find angle A. Now what you need to know is that sine is an operation. So I have the sine of A right now. How do I undo sine? Well, I take the inverse of it. So that's going to look like this, sine negative 1. So I take the sine negative 1 on both sides. Again, it's called the inverse. Okay, so examples of inverse operations would be like addition and subtraction. If I add 4, the inverse is subtracting 4. Um, another example is multiplying. If I multiply by 7, the inverse would be dividing by 7. So sine and inverse sine undo each other. So on this left side, they cancel each other out. So I'm left with angle A equals the inverse sine of 36 over 85. Now to do this, we have to go to the calculator. Okay, so on the calculator, you're going to hit second and then sine, and you'll notice that sine negative 1 pops up, 36 divided by 85, and your parentheses and hit enter. Okay, so this right here tells us that our angle A is 25.06 degrees. Okay, so let's write that. We know that the measure of angle A is 25.06 degrees. Now we also have to find the measure of angle B. To find the measure of angle B, I could do the same thing. I could set up a trig ratio. Or, even easier than that, I know that if angle C is 90, angle A plus angle B has to also equal 90. Again, because a triangle is 180. So that tells me that angle B is going to be 90 minus whatever angle A is. So angle B then is going to be 90 minus 25.06 and I get the measure of angle B to be 69.94 degrees. Okay, let's try another one together. Looking at example number two, it says again, find the missing angle measures. So again, angle C is 90 degrees, and we have to find A and B. I'm going to start by labeling my sides. Okay, so I have the side across from angle A, which is going to be the opposite side. This side right here is going to be the hypotenuse, and then I have the adjacent side. Now, if I have the opposite and the adjacent sides, that's going to be tangent. So I get the tangent of angle A equals 33 over 56. Now, at this point, some of you are going to want to divide by tangent. You can't divide by tangent. Tangent and A right now are together. They're, they're a package. It's almost like they're married. So the way that we break them up is we introduce the inverse. So we take the inverse tangent on the left side and the inverse tangent on the right side. Okay, so again, examples of inverses are like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Uh, they undo each other, so inverse tangent and tangent disappear. So I end up with angle A equals the inverse tangent of 33 over 56, and that's the vocab we use. We say inverse tangent, not tangent negative 1, inverse tangent. So at this point, we need to go to the calculator again. Okay, so on the calculator, you're going to hit second tangent, which brings up that negative 1, of 33 divided by 56. You're going to end your parentheses and hit enter. So this tells us that angle A is 33.51 degrees. So I get the measure of angle A equals 33.51 degrees. 
And then from up above, we know that angles A and B are complementary. They add to 90. So I'm going to get angle B to be 90 minus 33.51. So I get the measure of angle B to be 56.49 degrees. Okay, I have a few comments for you. Um, one, we should check to make sure that these answers make sense. So let's label them on the figure. I get angle A to be 33.51 degrees, and I get angle B to be 56.49. So first of all, does this make sense? Well, yes, it does. I notice that my smaller side is located across from my smaller angle, and that my bigger side is located across from my bigger angle. So that's a good sign. Some things about the calculator that you need to know. Um, you do not need to simplify this fraction. So if that fraction will simplify at all, that doesn't matter. You don't have to simplify it, so don't worry about that. And then secondly, if you ever get an error message, it means that you're putting something into the calculator wrong. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay, we have another example, which is example number three. Again, find the missing angle measures. This is one that I would like you to do on your own, please. Pause the video right now and find angles A and B. Okay, you should have had a chance to try this on your own. You should have gotten angle A to be 48.59 degrees, and you should have gotten angle B to be 41.41 degrees. If you did not get those two answers, then you did something wrong. To find angle A, you should have used the inverse cosine. If you didn't, then you did something wrong. If you got these problems correct, good, move on. If you did not get these problems correct, then you need to pause the video right now and find your mistake. So let's move on to the next page, please. Okay, so one more. Uh, example number four says find the missing angle measures. Okay, so we have to find R and S. Let's start by finding angle R. Now, this is different because I have all three sides. I have the side that's opposite of R, I have the hypotenuse, and I have the adjacent side. So this is good. This means I can use any, uh, any trig ratio that I want. So let's pick our favorite. So I'm going to choose cosine. I'm going to say the cosine of angle R equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so 20 over 25. Now again, this is going to simplify, but that doesn't matter. You don't need to simplify it. Now, how do I get rid of that cosine? Well, I take the inverse. So I'm going to do the inverse cosine on the left side. Again, that's what the cosine negative 1 means. And then I'm going to do the inverse cosine on the right side. Okay, what's really nice is the co inverse cosine and then the cosine cancel each other out. And we get angle R equals the inverse cosine of 20 over 25. Okay, so going to our calculator, we're going to hit second cosine of 20 divided by 25, and we get angle R, the measure of angle R, equals 36.87 degrees. Now to find angle S, all I'm going to do is take 90 and subtract angle R, so I get the me measure of angle S to be 53.13 degrees. Okay, so hopefully uh, we've gotten this idea down by now. In the video, we used inverse trig to find uh, missing angle measures. So yesterday you just set up normal trig ratios and you found sides. Today we're, we're going backwards, we're using inverse trig to find the angles. So here's the objective problem that you are going to do. Now this is a problem that you've seen before, so I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to change this to be, I'm going to put a 66 here. So find angles A and B. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to see that you have example three and this objective example both completed um, with the correct work. See you tomorrow.